How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Buddy's House of Horror Podcast, and welcome to my review of VHS 99, the film that I've been looking forward to very much so during this upcoming year. Of course, if you remember the House of Horror Podcast from last year, I reviewed VHS 94, which overall I thought was a little bit of a mixed bag. Overall, I enjoyed the film quite a bit, but I didn't like every single segment within the film. Um, and today we're talking about the sequel to that film, the overall fifth film in the VHS franchise. So I'm going to be getting into my thoughts about the new film. It released on Shudder last week. I finally got the opportunity to watch it last night. Very excited to do so. I wish we could have gotten all the homies together to watch this film like we watched VHS 94. Um, but alas, it was just me and my wife and we still had a great time watching the film. If you have not seen any any of the VHS films leading up to this point, that is completely okay, because if you're new to the franchise, VHS is an anthology film franchise where none of the stories are really connected. You don't need to know any of the continuity going into it. You can just pick up any of the films and watch it, and you will be just completely fine. Um, as I said, it's, it's an anthology, so each story is its own self-contained adventure. In this film, it has five new segments with as well as a wraparound, which doesn't have like a concrete kind of story to the wraparound. It's more or less just kind of setting the tone to this. I mean, it does have like a general story, but it's not like a major, major thing. Like in some of the other VHS films, you would see, you know, you'd kind of have like a story that's going on in between all of your things and you're cutting back and forth trying to do it. This it's more like little segues, little fun things in between and I felt that they were very nostalgic. Um, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, I guess what did I think of all of the segments? So overall, I found this film to be very, very fun, very enjoyable. There was not a segment in this film that I disliked. If you remember VHS 94, I liked most of the segments, but the wraparound was a total mess, and one of the stories in there just didn't fit the tone of the rest of it. Um, and I have similar feelings about the other three VHSs. There's things that I like about them, there's things that I don't like about them. Like VHS 1, it kind of doesn't have a lot going for it. It has a couple good segments in there. VHS 2 has a couple really good segments in it, but also a couple that are really missing the mark. Um, the third one, VHS Viral, I haven't seen since it came out, but I remember that one pretty much being pretty bad overall. And VHS 94 I thought was like a good return to form for the franchise. It had a couple really, really good segments, but like as I said, the wraparound was a total disaster. And it did have a segment within that didn't match the overall tone. It completely like threw off the vibe of what VHS 94 was about to be. It didn't feel 1994. This one feels very 1999. There are a few things in it that are a little off, um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But for the most part, it feels like 1999 throughout this film. We start off with our wraparound, which is basically a home movie that someone made with little stop motion action figures. And the reason I felt this very nostalgic was because I used to make stuff like this all the time as a kid. I used to always make little, I would normally do like a Western kind of thing because I had a lot of like, my sister had like these doll houses. So we would use them as like Western, like kind of doll houses. And we would make little stop motion short films with our action figures and stuff like that. So I did stuff like this all the time. Um, we made like an Indiana Jones one at one point. We did all kinds of cool stuff. But it really reminded me of that. And 1999 would have been roughly around the same time period where I would have been doing this. Um, maybe a couple years later, obviously. In 1999, I was about seven years old. But so around this time, I was doing stuff like this. So it really hit a special place in my heart, the wraparound in this. It was obviously unlike any of the films I was making at the time. There was a lot of blood and swearing and stuff like that um, that I was not doing at seven years old. But still, it hit that special place in my heart, so I really liked the wraparound in this as well. I thought it was very fun, very humorous. If there was something I could say about just the entire piece of VHS 99, all of it put together, like, all of it was fun, 
none of it was scary. All of it was fun and goofy and silly. It would be a perfect movie to watch with like a bunch of people and just kind of have a good time. There's nothing in it that is actually scary, I feel. There's some like creepy moments and stuff like that, but then once you get like the certain reveals to some of the things, it's not scary. Um, I'm, I'm going to do this like relatively spoiler free. Of course, I'm going to be getting into some plot details just to move it along, but I'm not going to be giving away the endings and stuff like that to some of the shorts. But, you know, you kind of need to give a little bit away to sort of, you know, talk about any of the segments at all. The first one is called Shredding. And it's basically about a band that is going to go to this underground colony and they are, may or may not be, haunted by another band, like a zombie-ish band, but we don't know, really know what's going on. Like, we see them getting possessed, we see them, like, goofing around, like, oh, they're pretending to be possessed just to freak out their drummer, who's a little bit more on the timid side, so we don't really know if they're luring this guy down here just to make fun of him, or if there's really something more that's going on to it. The thing that bugs me about this one is I don't feel the music in it for the band is representative of 1999. Like, they're playing stuff that... It's just weird, because 1999, like, that's the year, like, Enema of the State came out, right, by Blink-182. And the music they're playing in this sounds like stuff that would be influenced by the punk scene after that album. So if this was, like, VHS, like, 2004, like, totally would have gotten it. But VHS 99, at least for me, like, the way I felt, like, representative of the music, it didn't really feel 1999. It feel, felt more like music we would get into the early 2000s, into that next wave of sort of pop, punk, punk, stuff like that. Um, it sounds less like, you know, stuff like The Descendants and more stuff like your Green Days, more stuff like, like, obviously after, because there's some, like, grunge element to the music, too, like, it kind of sounds like a hole or a Nirvana, but the music in this, the music in this actually, it really reminded me of Lindsay Lohan's fake band in Freaky Friday, that's kind of how the music in this sounded to me, and of course, that was a little bit later on, past 1999. But um, other than that, like, I thought the short was fun. Again, not particularly scary, but I didn't think any of them were scary, so I'm going to end up saying something similar to that to all of them. Something else that was in all of them that I felt was a little too much was, yes, we understand we're in 1999. You can build that up through the atmosphere, the tone, and stuff like that. You don't need to constantly keep putting in 90s references. Like, in one of the shorts... They're like, oh, if you do this, we'll get you a Dreamcast and, and stuff like that. Like they're like constantly making 90s references in all of these, which I thought was a little bit too much. And I mean, I get each of these was made by a different director and a different team and all of that. So maybe they didn't necessarily know all of the references that were going to be in all of the shorts. So maybe some of them could have been like, OK, let's tone that down a little bit because they're constantly referencing the 90s. Um, but regardless, the next one is called Suicide Bid, um, and that, this is the second short in it, not including the wraparound. I thought overall this was a better short than the first one, um, but for this one, the main problem for me is the ending. I thought the ending in this really, I won't say the ending, I'll say sort of the reveal, like, I'll say like the three-fourth point, because the ending is like slightly different. Like the three-fourth point where stuff really starts hitting the fan and we see something spooky, that's where it kind of lost me. I don't think, it, like it literally looked like a fake, you know, it looked like something you could buy at Spirit Halloween, like one of the fucking, you know, like the animatronic things, like that's what it looked like. But regardless, just to talk about the short a little bit without giving anything away, because we don't know if that was real or imaginary, the thing that you see, and we don't know what happens after you see the thing that I'm talking about. So still, it's spoiler-free. Uh, but this is basically about a girl who's trying to get into a sorority house and has to go through a hazing ritual. And they kind of lead her in. She's also noticeably like way shorter than all the rest of the girls in this for, uh, in this sorority. So they're already kind of like picking on her and they're like yeah we'll let you into the sorority but you have to sleep all the way through the night in this coffin and they basically bury her alive in a coffin and they're throwing dirt on her and then all night long they're kind of trying to freak her out make her um ring the bell that they've rigged up to her to her to get her out so it's basically a really 
messed up hazing ritual, very scary concept. Um, I really like this short leading up to the reveal, and even when you get the reveal, it's still fun, it's still funny, but they could have done something legit scary. They could have had something legitimately creepy instead of goofy. Um, it's goofy. That's all I have to say. Like, the, the reveal in it is very, very goofy. The next short is called Ozzy's Dungeon, notably directed by Flying Lotus. And this one, this one, to me, it out of the shorts, I guess all of them had something nostalgic in it for me. Like, the first one, bands and skateboarding. Okay, yes, I played in bands skateboarding, but it wasn't really in the 90s, but I still have a nostalgic value to it. The second one, I remember always being like kind of freaked out with the idea of being buried alive, and you would hear like all these old stories and stuff like, oh, people are buried alive all the time, that's why you had the bell back in the olden days, because the medical field wasn't what it was today, so you would often bury people alive that weren't actually dead, and you'd get like the scratch marks on the coffin, so that's just something I always remember hearing about in the early 90s. This one here, Ozzy's Dungeon, is a total throwback to all of those Nickelodeon game shows, like Guts, Legend of the Hidden Temple, Double Dare, stuff like that. This is a love letter, well I guess a hate mail letter, to those game shows, because this game show in particular is a little bit fucked up, it takes a turn that you typically wouldn't see happen on a Nickelodeon game show where there's certain safety protocols in effect, and as revenge, after something terrible happens on one of these game shows, the family of that child comes back and tortures the game show host, like brutally tortures the game show host, makes him go through an obstacle course himself that may not be particularly safe, and it's just brutal, it's fucked up, and at the end it does have a twist that sort of goes against what we've been going up to into this point, and it's a good twist, it's a dark twist, I really like the twist in it, and this short, I, I thought it was very, very fun. Again, not particularly scary, but this one is definitely very dark, messed up, brooding. Admittedly, it goes on a little too long. At least from my memory, this one feels the longest out of all of the segments. But it's still very, very good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, it's hard to like rank where I think these fall um because they're all pretty much similar so it'll be hard to like rank them one through five i don't even know if i can really rank them one through five because they're all just kind of good you know what i mean like it's not vhs 94 the segment with ratma was like outstanding incredible great like all the segments in here are good they're fine they're fun which makes it a very good fun film overall but it's not like there's one segment or anything that really goes above and beyond is an, and is insane crazy. But Ozzy's Dungeon still a lot of fun, very nostalgic. The Gawkers is the next one. This one is just nostalgic because it just reminds me of skateboarding. Um, we never did anything like that the kids do in this one, obviously. Um, it's very voyeuristic. These kids definitely probably wound up in jail at some point in the future if they would have lived. Wink, wink. Um, but yeah, this one, basically, it feels like American Pie. Like, this is a horror version of American Pie. Everyone remembers in American Pie when, like, they're setting up the camera and they're watching stuff, like, on the webcam. That is basically what is happening in the Gawkers. They have a really beautiful neighbor that lives across the street and all the teenage boys want to spy on her constantly and it gets them into a situation that they were not accounting for and i'm not going to give anything away about this one it's a very simple story this one actually kind of feels like it blows right by it's a really really quick story and again once you get to the ending the special effects aren't that great, and it just comes off kind of goofy. But it's not about the journey, it's about the destination. This one has a lot of humor in it. It's very funny, and there's not really too much to say about it. Um, it reminds me of Miles. Like, this short, it just makes me think about something Miles would love. Like, Miles would go insane for this segment of VHS 99. 
And then coming up with like the last segment is called To Hell and Back, um, directed by the same team that gave us that film. Uh, it just came out on Shudder 2. I really want to see it. And now for some reason, it's escaping my brain. What the hell? The f Deadstream. I think it's called Deadstream without pulling it up off the top of my head. I think it's called Deadstream. It's the film where the blogger goes into the haunted house. And I really want to see that one. And given Helen Back's credibility, I really want to see the full film that they did. Because Helen Back is good. It's a very good short as well. It starts with a satanic cult. And basically they're trying to have, there's like a woman, sacri she's like sacrificing her body to be possessed by the demon or Satan or something like that. And there's a video crew that's hired to film this ritual. And they end up getting sucked into hell and then, and back, obviously. Like it's called to hell and back. So this one has some of the best special effects. It has the potential to have the best set design, although it does take place at nighttime, you'd see very, very little of what's going on. It looks like they filmed it, like, actually, like, on location, like, not in hell, but it looks like they found, like, a desolate, like, canyon or something like that to film in. Um, it looks really good. It's really interesting. There's some fun characters in this thing. It's very... It's, I, I don't really know how to describe it without get, going into anything, but I love the cult aspect of it. I love a good satanic cult, and it's a very fun short. Like, there's not much else to say. Out of all of these, I'm not sure which one would be my, I guess, like, my least favorite one would probably be Shredders. I don't know. Maybe... It's tough to say. Like, I think if the if the game show one was a little bit more concise, it could have been the best one. Um, it's hard to rank them, but I thought all of them were good, but all of them do suffer from, like, a little, like, problem, and all of them feel a little goofy and silly, which I love, but it's not true horror, I guess. It's, so, it's very, like, silly horror. I haven't seen the Spirit Halloween movie, but it feels like scares and effects like similar to that it's not something that they really went all out and really tried to creep out the audience like they did with that ratma segment it's more fun and which i really like i really like the vibe of vhs 99 i really like how fun it is it's not taking itself seriously but i do wish that the scares came a little harder i do wish that it did have a little bit more horror elements to it it does have spooky stuff going on but nothing that's really making your blood curdle or anything like that it's nothing scary at all there's very little suspense in it it's just you're watching it for the spooky atmosphere and vibes you're not watching it to be scared so i guess if you're scared of horror movies like legit you get scared of horror movies this might be a good one to watch because it's not too scary there's not too much really going on like you're able to sit like even the jump scares i was just kind of like sitting there like straight in the face there is no tension at all but it doesn't mean that it wasn't fun it was a fun time throughout I really enjoyed VHS 99 as a whole I think it's like on par with VHS 94 because VHS 94 had better highs and lower lows this one was like a steady middle throughout so I want to know what you guys think what are your favorite VHS segments of course um, throughout all of the films. Let me know what your some of your favorite segments are. Let me know what some of your least favorite segments are. If you're watching this over on YouTube, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Share the video with a few friends. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to the show, make sure you're leaving me a five-star rating and a review. Make sure that you are subscribing to the show on whatever platform you're listening to it on. Help me spread the good word about the House of Horror. Help me get more eyes and ears on the show. I really appreciate it. Let me know what I should be reviewing next. Let me know what horror films I need to check out by the end, by the end of the year. I've watched a few releases that have come out this year. I still haven't seen Barbarian. Still haven't seen Smile. There are a few films on my list that I still need to go see. But what was your favorite new release horror in 2022? Definitely get in touch with me and let me know. And with that, I will see you guys back for another episode of the house of horror coming at you very very soon and with that just take care and stay spooky